Mm, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Button Now Fellowship. Thank God for all of you that are here. Thank God for those who are watching by way of internet. <clears throat> Thank God for all of you. Thank God for all of you. Uh, just we'll jump right into it. We'll get right into it. Uh, just remember the gala for our G3 Foundation is going to be on November the 2nd. All right, <clears throat> That's going to be on November 2nd. And we're going to have our uh, friends and family day on November 3rd, okay, uh, coming up. All right, so we'll be doing that. Uh, somebody texted me about the cruise. I have not got to the cruise just yet. Uh, we have not found, uh, got the information just yet as far as what we're going to do and how we're going to finalize that. So uh, we'll, we'll, I'll try to get that information together and I'll try to figure out uh, what is what and when we're going to do that and so people can start planning for it and that way you can you know pay monthly you don't have to pay a bunch of money at one time uh, and so I'll, I'll get that uh, going and so and we'll have that all right and so also let's continue to pray for just pray for one another appreciate it uh, let's continue to pray for one another also let's continue to pray for uh, those of who, who, who we aforementioned uh, also pray for brother uh, Grant uh, uh, he also, the, the one that made the design for our shirt and for the website he said his mother was diagnosed with cancer and so uh, we'll be praying for him <clears throat> and so uh, uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, uh, praying for him uh, also as well as um, uh, I got a call from a pastor, one of the pastors down in Miami uh, from my grandfather's church and so uh, he's really excited about wanting to learn more, uh, so which is good, and so we'll continue to be praying for them as well. And also, I think that was it. Uh, uh, that we just continue to pray. Let's pray for those individuals who are who are lost uh, in denominational systems, uh, because it's a, it's a, the it's a uphill battle uh, uh, when we're uh, this flesh this, this spiritual battle that we're battling. Uh, because there's so many people that are being deceived. There's so many people that don't know that they're being deceived. Uh, and there's so many people who are comfortable with being deceived. Uh, and it's, it's a sad thing, uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a battle nonetheless. And the more we know, uh, the more we can shed light on others. And so we're praying uh, for those individuals as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started on 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, feels like I'm forgetting something. Uh, but I, I can't remember right now, so uh, but go ahead and turn to First Corinthians chapter number eleven. For those people who have emailed and called me, uh, I have not gotten to it yet. Uh, and for the uh, call, text, or emailed, uh, I'll get around to it. Uh, I've been kind of slack on that. Uh, just. Uh, uh, simply with with just uh, work, uh, the kids being back in school is a uh, little, little more. I need a little more time now <clears throat> to to get some things done. So, uh, but just uh, again, uh, if you felt like I haven't answered and it's been a while, if you call, text, or email again, uh, that doesn't bother me. Uh, I just understand that you want your question answered. That so that doesn't bother me. So it, it, that's fine. Uh, I know people think that they you know will be bothering me. Uh, but that, but that's, but that's fine. Okay. So if I haven't gotten to it yet, uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes uh, I'm human, so I don't remember everything uh, when you call, text, or email. So uh, <clears throat> if you haven't uh, uh, gotten your question answered, I'll, I'll be getting to it. Uh, so again, I thank God for your patience, and uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll be uh, uh, going forward there. So I'll try to get to a lot of those this week, uh, and by the end of the week, I should should have it all done. Uh, so nothing else. Go ahead and turn to First Corinthians chapter number eleven. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter number eleven. All right. Now we left off right at about verse uh, right at about verse fifteen, sixteen, right up in here. Uh, well, actually, we finished those. Uh, we finished those, and we'll start. Let's just start at verse seventeen. Um, let's have a word of prayer before we start reading. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. 
We thank you for your love, your kindness, your goodness. We thank you for who you are. Uh, we thank you now for <clears throat> yeah, the provision that you set forth before us. We thank you for salvation as a present possession. Uh, we thank you now, Father God, for this day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Uh, we thank you now for the opportunity uh, for us to uh, to be ambassadors of Christ, that we may <clears throat> shed the light of the gospel, the gospel unto those who are lost. Uh, Father God, we uh, ask now that you give us a door of utterance and opportunity that we may speak forth the mystery of the gospel, uh, to make all men see what is this fellowship of the mystery. Uh, we thank you for that now. Give us the strength and the fervor to continue to, uh, to, to keep pushing, to keep moving on, to keep persevering, uh, even through the tough times, knowing that your grace is sufficient. And when we're weak, that's when we're actually made strong. And so we thank you for that now. Uh, we pray for our government officials, uh, that we may live peaceably upon all men. Uh, we pray now for our, uh, brothers and sisters and family members who are lost in denominational systems. We pray now that the scale may fall from their eyes, uh, and that this glorious light of the gospel may shine into them. Uh, we pray now for those who are sick, who we've mentioned, Brother uh, Grant, his mother. Uh, we pray for her now the peace and the comfort of God uh, may rest upon her and upon him and his family. Uh, we pray now, <clears throat> in Jesus' name we do pray, amen. 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 All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, all right, now, we're, uh, let, let, I'm going to read this verse all the way down, okay? And then we'll come back and answer these, these, qu these, these verses and go through them verse by verse, okay? Now, as we're getting into this verse, we're now going to get down into the Lord's table, the Lord's Supper, and we're going to get into this issue of the Lord's Supper, okay? Uh, people ask, okay, sh uh, should we take the Lord's Supper? Should we not take the Lord's Supper? Some people religiously do it every first Sunday. Uh, you got to wear white, you got to do this, you got to do that. Some people say, well, if you take it and you're not worthy enough to take it, uh, which when they've always said that, I've always wondered, well, who is worthy enough to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you know, and we'll get into all of that, all right, because, again, there's a lot of misconception. Now, uh, one thing we have to understand is that whether you take communion or what people call communion, because we're going to see what the Bible explains about this, but when we, when we talk about the Lord's Supper, okay, uh, and coming together, uh, now, whether you do it or not, it's not going to send you a hell, to hell one way or the other, okay? Uh, let me get that clear, because again, Paul is talking about liberty in a lot of these verses with the Corinthians, mainly verse uh, chapter 9, 10, and 11, okay? So when it comes to this issue, it's not saying, oh, well, Pastor Hobbs said we can do it or we can't do it. That's not really the issue, okay? The issue is the, the uh, underlying fact of what it is, when was it instituted, and why, okay? So that's what we're going to get into. Now, whether you decide to continue to do it or not, that's your business, okay? All right, and so understand, I'm going to just give you the truth of what it is and what it's actually speaking about uh, because the, uh, the definitions that people have come up with or the uh, uh, and putting uh, stipulations and obligations upon people to either do or not do has nothing to really do with why God, what God intended it for. Okay, and so when we get into this, we have to understand uh, uh, these particular things. Okay, all right. So when we uh, when we look at this, First Corinthians eleven, look at verse seventeen. Now in this that I declare unto you. All right, I praise you what? I praise you not. Okay, watch this. That ye come together, not for the better, but for the what? Worse. But for the worse. Okay, so now, Paul is going to get into this Corinthians coming together, okay? Not for the better, but for the what? Worse. <clears throat> for the worse, okay? Look at verse 18. For first of all, when ye come together in the what? Church. church. In the church, okay? So the setting now is where? In the church. In the church. Just like when we were talking about uh, a little bit earlier, when we were talking about uh, uh, power and covering, he was talking about where? In the church, okay? That's what he's dealing with, okay? So that's the setting, okay? Now, I hear that there be what? Divisions. Divisions among you, and I do what? Partly believe. I partly believe it. Well, why would he partly believe it? Because they was mixing up everything he had taught them before or had said to them. Okay. They were living all kind of ways. Okay. Because they're both Jews and Gentiles in the same. Okay. But he says, he says, I hear that there be divisions among you and I partly believe it. Mm -hmm. Based on what he already know about what they do. Okay. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. Exactly. 
First Corinthians chapter number one, look at verse 10. First Corinthians chapter one, look at verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the what? Same. And that there be no what? Uh, Divisions. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same what? Uh, For it had been declared unto me of you, my brother, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are what? Uh, Contentions among you. Contentions among you. Okay, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. All right, so Paul is saying, listen now, I'm not praising you for what you're doing because what you're doing is not the right thing, okay? All right, verse 17, he says, you're coming together not for the better but for the what? Worse. Worse. When you come together and form a common union, which is what communion actually is, okay? It's not what people call it today. I'm going to take communion, which is drinking this, the grape apple juice, the grape juice, and eating these crackers. That's not communion. Just means common union. Okay, that's all that means. People coming together. All right, in the church, in the setting. So now, to have a common union with somebody means to share the same what beliefs. Okay, so now when Paul is talking about this, he's saying they're not coming together to for the betterment of one another because when we're together okay we're studying one with another all right allowing god's word to be true all right and it should be for the betterment of one another not for the what worse mm -hmm. so they were coming together not for the better but for the worse all right and now there there were divisions among them okay that there should not have been all right there were divisions among them that there should not have been okay all right now watch this Look at verse 19. For further explanation, there must be also what? Heresies. Heresies, okay. Now, what is heresies? It's gossip talk. What are heresies? False statements. Huh? False statements of heresy. Okay. Uh, uh, different sections, uh, 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 different... Uh, 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 stories or different accounts, okay? All right, so now, he's saying there must also be heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. You see that? So now, he's going, look at what he's doing now. After covering the order of things in the beginning of this chapter, he's now coming down to order as it pertains to this particular issue coming and eating together and forming a common union, all right? Look at verse 20. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to do what? Eat the Lord's Supper. Eat the Lord's Supper, okay? So when you come together in one place, it's not to eat the Lord's Supper. That's what he's saying, mm -hmm. all right? Because in church, you should come to do, do what? Edify one another, mm -hmm. okay? Watch this. For in eating... Everyone taketh before other his own what? Supper. And no one is hungry, and another is what? And another is drunken. So they were doing things the wrong way. All right? They were coming together and doing things the absolutely the wrong way. All right? Did you get that? No. All right. All right. Absolutely the wrong way. All right, now, watch this. Look at verse 20, 22. Paul says, what? Have ye not houses to what? Eat and drink it? So you're com they're coming together to eat food and eat the Lord's Supper, but that's not the purpose of them coming to church. That's not supposed to be the purpose, okay? All right? Because guess what? They can eat and drink and do that where? At home. You don't need to come together to do that. You could do that where? At home. All right? Have ye not housed to eat and to drink it, or despise ye the what? The church of God, okay? And shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. I'm not praising you because you come together and eat and, and you're leaving people drunk and, and, and starving because you're too busy trying to feed your own, own face and feed your own belly. All right? Look at go to Philippians chapter number three. Pastor, while you're going to Philippians, I was reading um, somewhere where someone said that they... <clears throat> What they were doing was having these potlucks, and it, it, people were bringing different foods, and they were eating before the Lord's Supper. Uh -huh. So this was a lot of what was going on, and why Paul was um, 
coming to them, you know, with these manner of words. For, for because they were doing what there? They were having dinner, like uh -huh. a, a full fledged dinner, uh -huh. before, and then right after dinner, then they want to have the Lord's Supper uh -huh. right in the church. Okay. And, and, and like you said, you know, they don't come to church to eat dinner at church. You could do that at home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But that's what I was reading that they say it was different people were bringing different foods right there in the church and having supper before the Lord's Supper or on top of the Lord's Supper. Okay, uh, it, it makes sense. I don't know. You've read it in the commentary or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's why we have to allow the Bible to 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 say what it says, and that's it. Uh, because a lot of that other stuff is just really assumption. Okay. So uh, yeah, uh, because again, what they were doing, whether they were doing it potluck or whatever, they, whatever they were doing, what happens is. They were the intent, okay? God always is, uh, is about the intent, just like what we talked about, about that long hair, short hair. Mm -hmm. All right, you can have a woman with long hair, and she could be just uh, a pure Jezebel, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so so understand it's not a, it's the intent, it's the heart, okay? Mm -hmm. So understand when it comes to that issue, all right, it's not about the eating and whether they were doing it before or after. The, it, it's about the intent of what they were doing, okay? Uh, and, and in the sense that they were coming together for the wrong reason, all right? Mm -hmm. Look at Philippians chapter 3 especially in the church. Yeah. Look at Philippians 3 and look at verse 19. Look at verse, start at verse 17 of Philippians 3. We have it. Mm -hmm. All right, now, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for what? Example. For an example, okay? For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of, of who? The cross of Christ. Of the cross of Christ, okay? <laughs> All right, they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is what? Destruction. Whose God is their what? Yeah. And whose glory is in their shame who mind what? <laughs> See, people are coming together and their God is their own belly. How can they make themselves full? All right? How can they make themselves full, okay? Go back to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 23. All right, so Paul was reprimanding them, all right, for coming together to eat when you could do that at your own houses. All right, you can satiate yourself, your thirst, your hunger. You can do all of that at home. You don't need to come to church to do that. All right, you should come to church to be edified, okay? And that was the whole point. When they were coming together, it was a social event, just like how you see at most churches today. All right, it's to see who you haven't seen in a while, or it's to see who you're friends with. And, and, and the awkward part about that is that I was talking to a brother today. It's crazy how uh, uh, he was telling me about how he had left the church that he was at because they were, they were just not teaching the right thing. And he said he kind of got tired of it. And he just couldn't take it anymore. They was, they were, he was trying to interject the truth in there, and he just couldn't take it. And he said that he saw somebody at the store, one of the old members at the store, and was like, uh, you know, uh, I just really, really miss you. You know, I really, really miss you. And it's, I've just been praying for you and worried about you. And he said the crazy part about it is you miss me because I left the church because you stay right around the corner from me. Mm. <laughs> So if you really wanted to come see me and you missed me that bad, I, we literally stay five minutes away from each other. But he said the crazy part about it is that people act that way just because you leave the church. And what baffled me the most, and, and I've had this uh, experience as well, that even when people see you in the store, they don't know what to say to you. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that just baffles me. Because just because I don't go to the same church as you don't mean I can't be friends with you. Mm -hmm. And the crazy part about it is they have mm -hmm. all kind of friends that they go to their churches with. <laughs> But yet, when it comes to me, you don't know what to say, okay? So, so again, when it comes to that, this is what Paul is talking about, okay? You don't have to be in church. You don't come to church to do all this socializing, okay? We're coming to church to learn, all right? Because guess what? Time is of the essence, all right? We ought to be redeeming the time for days are evil, okay? And again, don't get me wrong now. Singing, all of that stuff that people do in church is not sinful. It's not sending you to hell, all right? I love music, okay? I'm not opposed to that. What I'm saying is that if you're singing for an hour but preaching for 15 to 20 minutes, all right, then your priorities are mixed up. 
all right? Because the word is more important than the emotion of singing, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the whole point, all right? But the first thing that people do is say, well, so you saying we can't sing in church? No, I'm not saying anything. What I'm saying is that would you rather sing and be caught up in emotion and then Christ come back and you don't know the gospel, or would you rather hear the gospel, all right, and no music, but you go to heaven when he comes? Okay, so, and again, it's, it's, that's a little, you know, uh, 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 cut and dry, but that, that's the idea of it. The word should be the main focal point because, again, we're not coming together to eat the Lord's Supper. We're not coming together to do any of these, to be entertained. We're coming together for the purposes of building up the inner man, edification. Uh -huh. Well, you mentioned that, um, the singing, you think about the songs and hymns. I mean, we went through a, a discussion about that and how, I can't remember which one, but the songs were, I guess, actual, um, if I'm mistaken, the songs, I remember the book of songs, are the actual songs. Right, right. So I thought the songs were actual, as actual doctrine, while the hymns, I can't remember what, how we mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, because uh, Paul talks about it, uh, uh, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Right. Uh, yeah, so the hymns were more of a, uh, uh, the, uh, the psalms were, were doctrinal uh, teachings, the hymns were more of a uh, 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 direct actual to the heart okay the hymns speak directly to the heart about christ all right and so the spiritual songs are those things talking directly about this doctrine for today all right and so again psalms uh, okay the book of songs are songs that we can sing all right however the doctrine contained in those for instance psalms 23 24 all of that stuff is not talking about anybody today okay uh those were songs that they would be need to know or sing out here now just they made me think that we have to be careful when, like you said when in church when they are singing those songs because you can by singing those songs and agreeing to those you put yourself back up under the right right yeah. which which a lot of times most gospel songs all right don't contain the gospel right. okay they they make you feel good they're motivational just like most preaching okay uh, it's more motivational it doesn't it doesn't do anything for you other than stimulate the emotion uh, and again, sometimes it's not bad. When I'm feeling a certain way, I want to listen to a certain type of music. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, what I'm saying is that when in church, okay, uh, uh, that is, we're not redeeming the time. If we're going to sing, it needs to be a song about the gospel, all right, so that people can be edified. Uh, that should be the spiritual songs. Should be the spiritual songs, right, right. Uh, but again, you know, most people come to church, they want to, you know, we're going to live in the place up, you know. You know, how much more alive can we be than in Christ and knowing his word? Uh, but, but again, you know, to each his own with that. Uh, and again, I'm not con con uh, condemning anything because I love music myself. Anybody knows me, I love all kind of music, any, every genre. I love music, okay? Uh, so, so again, my, my thing is if I'm hearing a, uh, a, a, an R&B song, I don't want to hear a rap, somebody rapping. I'm going to hear somebody singing R&B, rhythm and blues. If I'm listening to a gospel song, I don't want to hear nothing talking about, you know, something where I could go get a better job. I want to hear something about the actual gospel. Uh, so, and it, so to me, it's quite deceptive to say you're going to sing, to sing a gospel song, but there's no gospel involved. Right. Uh, uh, so, so that's just me, okay? Again, I'm not condemning anybody. You do what you want to do. But I'm saying we ought to be redeeming the time as it pertains to these things. So when we come to church, it's not to do, like Paul says, eat the Lord's Supper and do all of this. It's to be edified and built up. Uh, because just think about it. How often do people actually go home and study the Word? You know? How often do people really, really study the Bible? Because in church, that should be the place where you come. Even if you haven't heard, read your Bible all week, you surely should be able to read a lot of it in church. That's the, yeah. that's the purpose of coming. Mm -hmm. All right, Because again, you go to most churches, you hear one scripture, maybe two. And if you don't read your Bible for five, six more days before you come again, you have no substance to, to, to keep you throughout the week. Mm -hmm. All right. So even if you read your Bible once a week here, you're going to at least get some substance. All right. That that will sustain you in a time of trouble. All right. All right. Look at this. First Corinthians. Um, where are we at? Eleven. Look at verse twenty-three. First Corinthians eleven. Look at verse twenty-three. Now Paul says, for further explanation. Now for I have what received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed did what. And, he, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink, it in, 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 in remembrance of me. 
For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning what? The Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body, okay? Go over to Galatians chapter 1. We're going to go back. I want to read that whole thing because as I'm speaking now, we're going to cover pretty much all of these verses, okay? All right? But I'm going to, I want to break down this issue of the Lord's Supper, what it actually is and what Paul is saying here. All right? Because we've got to be careful of what's going on. We've got to remember the context. We've got to remember the audience to whom Paul is speaking, okay? And we've got to remember all of that, okay? So go to Galatians really quick and go to chapter number 1 and look at verse 11. <clears throat> All right, go to Galatians 1, look at verse 11. What happened? Amen. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after who? Man. It's not after man. <laughs> For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the what? Revelation, Revelation of Jesus. Revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, watch this. So we know that when Paul is saying something of that which he received of the Lord, all right? Paul didn't receive the law from the Lord. He received that from Gamaliel. He was taught the law under the tutelage of Gamaliel, okay? So when Christ came, Christ did not come teaching him a doctrine that was contained in his earthly ministry. When Christ came to Paul, it was teaching him the mystery of the, for this dispensation of grace. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 23. All right, we have now look at this. For I have received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. So Paul received something that he's delivered now. All right, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, did what? Take bread. Take bread. So now, who took the bread? The Lord. The disciples. All right. So watch this now. Look at this right here. What does it mean when it says he, the night he was betrayed, he took bread? What does that mean? Himself. Huh? He ate bread. Yeah, he's the he bread of life. It, it was himself because then that was the night he was getting ready to die, right? Okay. Yeah, so he knew he what was going to happen, right? Right. So for uh, seeing him forward thinking and you know he was going to die the next day. You know, okay. And that, that's why he, he was giving himself up at that point in time as the bread, all the bread of life. So did they physically eat it? No. So when it, you're right in a spiritual sense, okay, because he is the bread of life. However, when it says he took bread at this particular supper, mm -hmm. in which we call the Lord's Supper. The unleavened bread. Uh, huh? The unleavened bread. The unleavened bread, okay. So he actually took bread. Now, when people are talking about breaking of bread, a lot of times they associate that with communion, which they associate with the Lord's Supper, okay? All three of those things are three different things, okay? It's not all one. Say it again. All right, the breaking of bread, which they associate with communion, which to them is the Lord's Supper. The breaking of bread is just that, taking and eating bread, okay? Has nothing to do with nothing other than that. Because when he took the bread and ate with them, they were having a what? Meal. That's what he ate. Now, we understand what he told them, that it was in representation of me. Mm -hmm. This is my body. Getting them to see something. We're going to get to that in a second, okay? But he actually literally took the bread, right? And he ate the actual bread. So the breaking of bread this is not synonymous with the Lord's Supper. Because there were a lot of times they ate bread, and it was not the Lord's Supper, okay? Go to Acts chapter 2. Good, huh? Even the manna. Yeah, yeah, even that. Because when they ate the Lord's Supper, what event was it? 
Passover. 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 All right. It was that Passover. All right. So the Lord's Supper was the Passover, which is a symbolic. All right. What happened at Passover? Angels of Passover. Right. Which represented what? Christ being there. Huh? Christ being at the home. They were being brought out of Egypt. Right, right. Out of, when they put the doorposts, because they was, if you didn't have the doorposts, the blood on the doorposts, you would what? Die. You would die. Okay, so it's a type and representation of the Lord Jesus Christ when He shed His blood and the purpose of it. All right. So watch this. Look at Acts chapter two, and look at verse forty-six. We have it. Yeah. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and doing what? Breathing. From house to house did eat their meat with gladness and, and what? Singleness of heart. Singleness of heart. So it has nothing to do with the Lord's Supper, communion, and all of that. It's just simply what? Breaking and eating bread. Okay? Watch this. Go to Acts chapter 19, I believe. We talk. We say we're gonna break bread just to get together and eat. Right, <laughs> right. That's right. But in the church, they make it something you know out to be this religious act that which you can't do it unworthily and all this other stuff. Okay. All right. Yes. I don't know if I should ask this, but what did he actually say when he said this do us uh, in remembrance? In remembrance of me and eat until when? We are gonna get to that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because he can't believe. Oh, right. right. And, and, and this is another thing of when people ask the question of what are we supposed to eat the Lord's supper? Or are we are we not? All right. We're gonna get yeah, to you that. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna get to that. Maybe he's talking to his disciples before a certain time. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I, what did I say? Acts what? Nineteen. No. Go to Acts twenty. Two twenty. No. Acts twenty. Oh, Acts, 20. Acts chapter twenty. Let's look at verse seven. We have it? Mm -hmm. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to do what? Break bread. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart in the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Mm -hmm. So again, another instance where they came together to do what? Break bread, bread which was what? Eat. Mm -hmm. Which is to simply eat. That was it, all right? Now, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the what? Body of Christ. Body of Christ. For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one what? Bread. Of that one bread. So understand, Paul is speaking about coming together and becoming one what? One body. Okay, so again, it's not synonymous with coming together to, do, to take communion, as they call it, or eat the Lord's Supper. Okay, now, did Paul eat the Lord's Supper or take communion? Or is he, uh, go back to 1 Corinthians 11, or is he commanding us that this is what we should do in, until Christ returns? Is that the case? See, that's just that's the it. point. That's that's the that's the question. According to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 and down, is Paul, did Paul partake of communion or the Lord's Supper, and is he telling us that we ought to, Paul could to do in remembrance of him? No. No, you couldn't. Because Paul know what I know. <laughs> so, well, what does it say? So, 1 Corinthians 11, is he not saying that this is what they ought to be doing? <laughs> to even come together to do what? That's what he's saying. I thought they were just fellowshipping. That's what they're supposed to be doing as one in body. Okay, so fellowshipping, what does that mean? Just talking and do what you do, yeah, study. Uh huh? Study, do it like what they do. Read his verses, read his okay. scriptures. But he say one body. Okay, so now, 
So is Paul telling us to come together for the purposes of take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. This mm -hmm. cup is the New Testament of my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it, and drink it in remembrance of me. No, he's not talking to us, not the body of Christ, for us to do that. See, that says until he comes back. But it sounded like he was repeating what the Lord was saying. Mm -hmm. All right, watch this. See that now. Lord, so yeah. Watch this is the key because most churches, including the one we came from, use this verse to say, "Well, look, even Paul is telling us to do this." Yeah, All right, mm -hmm. watch this. Remember now the context of chapter eleven, beginning with verse one, is Paul speaking to the Jewish members of the body about certain things. Okay. Because remember, they were asking him questions, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, one of the questions would have been, well, as a Jew, we were to keep the Lord's Supper until he returned, all right? So do, should we still keep that or should we not still keep that? That's what that's what would have been one of the questions. So Paul is saying, listen, for I receive, verse 23 of 1 Corinthians 11, I receive the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, did what? To the grave. So he's saying what Christ did for the purpose of explaining them how it was done. Remember now, even first, second, second Thessalonians, Paul is talking about uh, when the great deceiver uh, uh, comes, all right, the Antichrist and all of that. He's not saying we're going to go through that, but because there were some that troubled them, he's telling them about this to say, listen, we're not going through that, okay? Because they were saying that the, the resurrection had already passed. And so people were, they, the members of the body of Christ were thinking that now they're in the tribulation. Paul said, no, 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 no. We're not going through this, okay? Because all of this got to happen before this happens. So we didn't miss anything, all right? So Paul oftentimes, especially to the Jewish uh, members of the body, is telling them about this program in which they would have known to give them better understanding of what this program is all about. All right? So now he's telling them about the Lord's Supper or the communion, all right, in which the Jewish people would have been doing, but he's saying, y'all even doing it wrong. If you're going to do it, this is what it, how it should look. All right? Look at this. Uh, um, look at verse uh, 24. So for verse 23, so he took of that uh, of it the same what? Night. The same night. So who took bread? Paul or Jesus? Jesus. All right? So Jesus took the bread, all right? Now, Jesus took the bread, all right? And not only did he take it, all right? But he says, listen, look at verse 24. Excuse me. And when he had given thanks, all right, um, when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for who? You. Do this do in remembrance of who? Me. Who is the he here? Christ. Christ. Who was the you? The Jews. Disciples. Huh? Disciples. Yeah. The disciples. disciples. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Remember now, he was talking to his who? Disciples. He was talking to his, his disciples, okay? Now, watch this. Look at verse 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's what? Death. Death. Till he come. Till he come. Till he come. All right. So now, here we go. Let's go back now. We're going to look at this, this the, the Lord's Supper and the event as, it's, as it is explained in the Gospels. First, get Luke 22. It took me a while to see that, too. So Jesus is speaking about eating unto damnation and unworthily. Paul is just giving you what Jesus told him about when? That night. Okay? He's not telling you that I'm going to do this. This is how we ought to do it. He's giving you clarification about that night and why it would have been unworthy for them to eat and unto damnation for them. Because we know as members of the body of Christ, there's nothing that could damn us to hell because who shall separate us from the love of God? No. Nothing. Not, not principalities, not nothing. Not sickness, no. Uh -huh. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. Mm -hmm. So whether we eat and take communion unworthily or not, that has nothing to do with anything. 
Because we remember in church, you, as kids, you used to be scared to go right. take communion. Because you thinking like, well, sh I don't want to drink this because I might die. You know, because yeah. I know I just did something bad yesterday. I might die. Pouring out the juice out. Huh? Just pouring out the juice, you know? Yeah. And, 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 so, and so understand that, don't, number one, that is symbolic to something. We don't need the symbol of Christ because we what? We already have him. He's, he's Christ in us, the hope of glory. That is the mystery, according to Colossians 1.27, uh, to the Gentiles. Right? We have Christ in us. He's our hope of glory. We don't need the symbolism of eating no uh, bread and drinking and grape juice. We don't need that. That won't benefit us at all. That does nothing to, to, to build us up in the inner man. Absolutely nothing. All right? Absolutely nothing. Right? Just like fasting does absolutely nothing for our spiritual benefit. Right? The only thing that gets us closer to God today, all right, is studying. Amen. All of these other things were symbols for Israel, right? Because guess what? They have not received their salvation. They're still waiting on it. It's future tense. We've already received that of the Lord which is his shed blood as payment for our sins. And we have now, according to Romans 5 and 11, we have now received the what? Atonement. Mm -hmm. We're not waiting for nothing. We don't need a symbolism or something. Mm -hmm. All right? If I tell somebody, listen, I'm going to draw this symbol of a million dollars. All right? Now, I have the million dollars in the bank over here, but I want you to just take the symbol. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Who's going to want that? I don't want this symbol. I need this money over here that you got over here. So why would somebody want the symbol of Christ when you can have him in his totality? All right? We don't need to do things according to the symbols of things. But when Christ was in his earthly ministry, right, just like those things that, that which the Holy Ghost was going to teach them, the Holy Ghost couldn't come because Christ was still what? There. So there are a lot of things that Christ taught as a symbol to them until he returned. Right? Because they didn't receive salvation as a present possession. Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 39 and 40 says those people, uh, they have not received it because they have, they're waiting on all of them to receive it together. You see that? Look at this. Go to, what did I say, Luke 22? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go there. So, Pastor, you're saying today, uh -huh. those that would look this symbol of what was to come, today, they're not to be looking over there. They have to accept this. Right, absolutely now. Right, right. now. Which so is what Paul is explaining to this to them for, mm -hmm. right? He's, this, is what he, this is why he's explaining it. Look at Luke 22. Let's look at verse 3. Luke 22 and verse 3. Because remember now, when did this take place? The night before. The night Passover, the night Jesus was betrayed. That's what Paul is That's telling them about. So, so he's telling them about an event that has already passed, not something to do now. He's telling them about something that's already passed. But for most people, because it's Paul and it's newer, people say, well, look, we're going to go over to 1 Corinthians, and when we take communion, we're going to read this section of the scriptures because this is the new thing. No, no, no. This, what Paul is speaking about isn't anything new. He's basically telling you something that's already what? Old. Yeah, yeah. All right, watch this. Look at Luke 22, look at verse 3. Then entered Satan unto Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve, and he went his way and did what? Communion. All right, because remember, communion is not grape juice and crackers now. Communion is what? Common union. A common union. All right? So when we come together, it is for communion, but it's for the common union or the unity of the spirit, which we all have been one member, of many members, but one what? Wow. One body. Mm -hmm. That's why. So when we come together for communion, that this is the purpose. This is communion. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is what it is. All right? It's not bread and drink. That's what people have made it to be. Okay? Jesus. Watch this. Because he went his way and did what? Communed with them. No drink. Right? No drink and nothing. With the chief priests and captains, how he might do what? Betray him unto them. Unto them. So they had, the, they had a common what? Belief. 
they all wanted to get Jesus and crucify him. Jesus. Right? So now Judas is helping out because he's of the same mind because Satan had done what? Entered into his mind. You see that? So now, when most people are talking about, well, the devil made me do it. Now, did Satan actually enter into Judas? Physically? No. Huh? Physically, no. He entered the mind. The battle is of the mind. So when people are talking about all this stuff, but oh, the devil could do something. No, no, no. He's entering the mind. Because as, as so many people are thinking that you got to, I got to do all this to stay saved. That's, that's the devil, okay? That's what he's trying to get you to do, all right? That's why Paul says, well, I'm jealous of you with a godly jealousy, though as the serpent beguiled Eve through his what? Subtlety, it's going to be very subtle, so your minds might be corrupted with the, with the what? Simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. It's simple. You ain't got to do all this communion and, and worry about if you're going to die, if you do this, do it right. All of that stuff, we don't need all of that to please God. All right? You don't need all of that. You don't need to pay all this money to the church to please God. You don't need to do all of these works of the flesh to please God. Because the more work in your flesh, the less you're actually pleasing him. Amen. All right? What pleases God is faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you know because of your study, the more you're able to walk in the will of God and please him. Amen. Isn't it a verse that mentions that when we work, Christ rests? Similar to that, when he when we're working, he's resting. He when we're weak, he's strong. Yes, not not the first part, but the second part of how you mentioned it. Second Corinthians twelve and nine, when it says, "My grace is sufficient for thee," but when the when you are weak, that is when he's made strong. Right. So the more we are weak as as, as it pertains to the flesh and what we think we can do, all right, then that's when he's strong. All right. Because notice this, you know, when does pe when do people come to God? Trials. Oh, I don't. I just didn't have nowhere else to turn. But God said, "No, no, He was gonna come through if you did have somewhere else to turn." All right. So people uh, testify and say all of this. Well, you acting like God wasn't gonna come through if you didn't have nowhere else to turn. That was just your own doing because you didn't want to seek Him. Right. So people always say that. Ooh, I was just on my last dime. God showed up and showed out. You know, all of this nonsense. Okay, that's a bunch of nonsense. Because whether you got a lot of money or you don't, He's the same God. Right. They'll be quick to say that though when you talk about dispensations. Oh, He's the same God. Well, yeah, that meant He's the same God when you had money and when you don't. Okay. So understand when it comes to this issue. All right. It's the battle of the mind. Satan enters the mind. Christ gets to our mind by way of the word. So the more of the word that you don't know, all right, then guess what? The more Satan can attack. Mm -hmm. All right? Because what combats that is the word. Amen. Even Christ himself, when Satan came to him mm -hmm. in his subtlety, mm -hmm. he was not so very easy to deceive because he knew what? The word. Because he is the word. Mm -hmm. As it is written. Amen. That's how you fight the devil, Amen. not putting on no boxing gloves like people always talk about. Amen. You do that if you want. You're going you to lose now. <laughs> Trust me. All right? Because he knows what you're going to do before you do it. Amen. All right? So understand it's a spiritual battle. All right? It's a spiritual battle. All right? Look at this. Look at uh, verse 4. Did we read verse 4? Yeah. He went his way. All right, now. All right, now. Go to Matthew 21. Go to Matthew 21. Uh, no, 26, Matthew 26. Look at, let's start at verse 21. Ah, man, I don't have time to get through all of this. Uh, what you gonna skip? Yeah. <laughs> we'll finish on Sunday. Huh? Yeah, I'm gonna finish the Matthew because I don't want to even get started on this because it's a lot. And so I don't want to I don't want to break on this section. But I'm gonna read these verses and I'm gonna let y'all go a little early. Alright, because I don't wanna get into this because I don't want to keep y'all too late. Alright. Alright, look at this. Look at Matthew 26. Look at Matthew 26 and look at verse 21. And as they did eat, he said, Barely I say unto you. That one of you shall do what? So 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, 
This is what Paul is speaking about. The very same night that he was what? Betrayed. Betrayed. So this is the night. This is what he's speaking about. So again, Paul is not commanding us to do something new. He's explaining and clarifying something what? Oh, that's why we got to study the Bible. Don't just read it and say, oh, look, it's in Paul's epistle. So he's telling us to do it. No, he's not. He's explaining something of what was told to him. Because was Paul here in Matthew 26? No. So how would he have known about this to tell somebody? Jesus. That's why he said, I respond what I receive, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Okay, so he's explaining something to, 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 to get his point across. Because Paul wouldn't have known this event. He wasn't here. Yeah. All right? That's why I went to Galatians 1. Paul says, the things to which I received, I didn't receive it from man. So which means Paul didn't learn this because somebody told it to him. Mm -hmm. He learned all of this from Christ himself. Christ. All right? Look at this, Matthew 26, verse 22. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Mm -hmm. So now you can imagine they sitting at the table with Christ saying, listen, now one of y'all jokers is going to betray me now. Amen. And you can imagine they probably thinking like, well, dang, who is that? Is it me? Because now you got to imagine they probably had something. This is just my own thinking, right? Just for Jess, okay? They probably was thinking like, but dang, I was just talking about him the other day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> what is it me? Yeah, I wonder, you know? So understand that Christ knew that one of them would betray him, all right? And they're asking, well, dang, well, who is it? Is it me? All right? And I'm sure they probably was looking around like, dang, you did say something about him the other day. <laughs> it might be you. I might have. <laughs> Watch this. All right. Look at this. And verse 23, and he answered and said, he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall do what? Oh, the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been what? Born. Wow. Jesus. If he had not been what? Born. 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 That's right. Watch this. Verse 25. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it what? Yeah. He said unto him, Thou hast what? See. Now, Judas has a chance to repent. I'm telling you. He has a chance now because this is like Christ asking you a question to the answer he already knows. He's just putting it in the form of a statement that one of you will betray me. So they asking, who is I? Judas, you know good and well as you. Yeah. So now it's like Christ has given him a chance. All right? God does not send people to hell. He just honors your wish. He'll give you just what you desire. Because Judas, he gave him an opportunity to do what? To repent, to change his mind about this mistake he's about to make. So you're saying he did that by telling him that he was going to do it? He What's that? He gave him the opportunity, opportunity right? Okay. He gave him the opportunity, okay? Because now he's saying, one of you will betray me. Had he betrayed him yet? No. no. So he still had an opportunity to make another decision. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. So Christ is always gracious and now and merciful, yes. even though he knew. Mm -hmm. But he gave him a chance to repent. But did he repent? No. He did not repent. All right, now. Go back to 1 Corinthians 11. I'm going to read this and I'm going to end here because it's, 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 it's just so much more. It's just so much more, all right? But I'm going to leave you hanging so you can come back Sunday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Watch this. Back in 25, when he said, you betrayed him, he said, Master, is I... He said it to them, thou hast said. Christ said, well, thou, you said it. You, you said, said it, not me. He not going to lie. You know when people say stuff, hey, you said that. I ain't said that. But he you not said that, lie. not me. He not going to lie. He wasn't going to say it. No. He said, now you said that. Yeah. So he left it up to your own interpretation. Now, you said that. I ain't said a word. I'm just telling you that one of y'all going to betray me. Now, if you asking is it you, you said that. I didn't say it was you. I just said one of you. And the question is, thy will be done. So if it wouldn't have been Judas, who would it have been? It have been somebody. Right. And remember now, <laughs> God will, God's plan and purpose will always come to fruition, whether you're on board or not. Because God used the decision of Judas to bring about his glory. Jesus. And that even the princes of this world did not know. Because had they known, they would not have what? Crucified the Lord of glory. First Corinthians 2. All right? So God's plan is always going to come to pass. Now, you're, are you going to be on the right side of his will or the wrong Jesus. side? That's totally up to you. Because Judas had a choice. He had a choice to, to, to commune with the chief priest to kill him or to, to betray him and send, him, send Jesus into their hands. 
And he also had a choice there, what we just read, to repent of that and change his mind. He had a choice. He, made a, he just made the wrong one. With so many of us today, we have...